This episode of Because Science is sponsored by Borderlands 3. Hi, I'm the Internet's Kyle Hill. Did you know that two out of every three people that superheroes try to save as we're falling off a building or a bridge or whatever in popular culture actually sustain serious injury? This is a public service announcement from Because Science. Superheroes are saving us the wrong way, but don't worry, we're here to help and make sure those saves are safe. So you know the trope. In any superhero story where a person is falling to their doom or about to crash a car or otherwise hurtling towards destruction, characters like Spider-Man, Superman, and Shazam save us by stopping our motion almost instantaneously. This works in popular culture, and it kind of makes sense, right, as a tactic, if you don't think about it, save someone as quickly as possible. But this does not work with human physics for a very specific reason. <sighs> and that reason? is deceleration. As we've talked about many times on this program, slowing down too quickly can be very dangerous if not straight up deadly for the human body. And I'm gonna stop talking like that right now. <laughs> Generally speaking, once an object is in motion, you have to change its velocity in the direction opposite to its motion in order to slow it down. This follows from Isaac Newton's first law of motion, which states that an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside, unbalanced force. Hit. Visualizing this stuff is just a bit easier up here. So say we have an object heading towards me. If I am tasked with very heroically changing this object's velocity, catching it and slowing it down, from Newton's second law of motion, we can see just how much force that's going to take. But just looking at the equation, we can see that if we extend the amount of time the catching process takes, the force is going to go down. But if we catch the object all at once, the force goes way up because the time goes way down. This is fine. When an object is built to handle these kinds of forces, the only the problem is, humans are not. Uh, this is basic physics, and you probably know it intuitively. My point is, it doesn't seem to be intuitive at all to most superheroes in popular culture. For example, in Shazam, our hero saves a bus full of people after that bus falls about 30 meters or 100 feet based on the length of the bus. Using that fall distance and the acceleration due to gravity on Earth's surface, you can calculate that the final velocity for this bus will be around 24 meters per second or over 50 miles per hour right before Shazam catches it. The problem is, look how quickly Shazam catches it. He catches this bus full of people after falling off of a bridge in just a few film frames with fully extended arms. Using the exact timing from the movie, this deceleration would then be around 60 Gs, entering into the death zone for sudden impacts for humans. And in fact, Shazam probably made it even worse. If he wasn't there, the bus probably would have hit the ground and crumpled at least a little bit, extending the amount of time the bus takes to come to a stop so that everyone inside of the bus isn't pulling rocket sled Gs and hitting a metal tube and, you know, becoming Anyway, for another example, look at Spider-Man save this guy. Did, did, did Spider-Man kill that guy? And watch Hancock safely stop this train. I, I mean, I know he's an anti-hero, but that conductor is conduct dead. My point is that there has to be a better way. If superheroes want to save our squishy bodies, they need to stop acting like heroes and put themselves in our position. Oh. Who am I now? Who could say? Who? Let's take the simplest possible scenario. Say you are some hero and some poor fellow has just fallen off of the top of a 10-story building. How do you stop this person without stopping them permanently? Well, the solution is to fall with them. Don't just catch them. Going back to our general force equation, the easiest way to decrease the amount of force on a decelerating object is to increase the amount of time that object is decelerating for. The problem again with real life is that gravity is deceptively aggressive. While it may take a guy falling off of a building dozens of seconds in a movie to get close to the ground, if you were to fall under free fall in Earth's gravity off of a building that is 10 stories tall, maybe 30 meters, then it would take just two and a half seconds to reach the ground for you. 
Let's put some real numbers to this now just to see the difference in the deceleration techniques that we are talking about. Let's say, like in the movies, our guy has been falling for some amount of time already before the superhero notices, maybe two seconds. That leaves, realistically speaking, only half a second for the person to be saved. Now, if our hero flies up to our person and then instantaneously stops their motion like you see in most movies and they hit literal arms of steel, then by my estimation, that person might pull around 200 Gs and be uh, pulled apart. If instead, our hero follows our advice, flies up to our guy, catches him, and then decelerates with him at a constant rate all the way to the ground, our person might pull instead just four Gs. Uncomfortable, sure, but survivable. From these physics, we can make a general rule for heroes attempting to save falling humans. No matter the height, try to make the catch time as close as possible to the remaining fall time. To show just how potentially beneficial this technique might be, let's bump our fall height up from 30 meters all the way up to 150 meters. Now, if our person has been falling again for maybe two seconds before the superhero notices, if our hero flies up to this person, catches them softly, and then decelerates with them all the way to the ground for the remaining 3.6 seconds, this person wouldn't even pull four Gs. They would only pull half of one G. Slam on your car's brakes can be worse than that. Again, of course, a superhero could save us in less time than 3.6 seconds. However, this general rule dictates the best possible deceleration for us. It's not all that easy though, because if you were a hero trying to save someone more safely as we are suggesting, it would mean knowing exactly how much time someone has before they hit the ground under Earth's gravity based on how long they've already been falling for, which you may not know. Thankfully, there's a general rule for this too. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Every fall from a building or a tumble off a cliff if it's under a thousand feet is gonna end in well under 10 seconds. So any hero attempting to save me is gonna have to make it to me as a general rule in under 10 seconds, well under 10 seconds. None of this dramatic waiting stuff. And so a superhero to save me more safely should fly up to me, embrace me, and then decelerate me at a constant rate all the way down to the ground to use up the remaining time. Oh, this is what a superhero save should look like. Wow, one hand, you're so strong. Uh, you almost never see pop culture saves like this, but I don't necessarily blame the movies themselves. It's just not as dramatic, and sometimes the movies do get it right. In the very first Superman movie, Kal-El catches Lois Lane after she falls from a precariously perched helicopter. He saves her, of course, and he stops her in a very short amount of time. Nerds for years have been using this exact scene to make the very point of this episode that superheroes are saving us in a very unsafe way, except... Falling for as long as Lois does in this scene, she would likely reach terminal velocity for a human-shaped thing, 55 meters per second or around 120 miles per hour. When Superman catches her, what's really important to notice is that the stop is not instantaneous. They both move downwards for about a full second. Now, a second is not very long, but it is much longer than the maybe few milliseconds that she would stop in if he caught her instantaneously. If you want to realistically evaluate this scene, Lois might only pull five Gs when she's saved by Superman. Skydivers pull more Gs than this when they open their chutes, so she could very well be fine after this. Ho, oh, ho, oh, ho! Oh, oh. Whoa! If superheroes wanted to keep all that drama though and catch cars and buses and science boys abruptly, they'd have to control for another variable. Velocity. Ah, if superheroes wanted to stop us in the shortest amount of time that we could handle, they cannot let us fall for too long or else our bodies can't handle it because we'd be going literally too quickly to catch. Ah, there's no ground in here. Ah! 
Have you ever had a really bad fall? Like falling a few feet or a few meters onto a surface that catches you like a movie superhero, maybe in just a hundredth of a second like concrete? Then you know that that is enough to put forces on you that can break bones. I broke my shoulder on one of my birthdays falling just a few feet off of a wall. Too much information probably. Based on studies of the human body's tolerance to G-forces, we know that the body can handle a decent amount of G over a short period of time. However, if those time periods get too small, then the Gs get dangerously high. And if the Gs are dangerously high, then the time period doesn't really matter. So for our more Hollywood style catch, we are gonna set the limit for that catch at 40 Gs worth of deceleration over just 50 milliseconds based on the literature. To stay under 40 Gs with the shortest possible stop duration to make it look more like a Hollywood style save, a superhero would have to save a falling person in less than two seconds after the start of their fall, which means they can't fall further than about 20 meters or 65 feet. Now, this doesn't look anything like it does in the movies. Catching a falling person very, very quickly after the start of their fall, eliminating all the drama. But that just proves our point. Superheroes are saving us the wrong way. Look, they get it, it's fine. <laughs> Superheroes, they can save us any way that they want to. A catch is obviously better than no catch, but if they are going to save us, maybe they should think about how they are saving us. Decelerate us all the way down to the ground. Give us the most amount of time to lessen the forces on our body. Please, stop catching us like you catch a bullet or something. Otherwise, you'll save us, <laughs> sure but we might be unable to say thank you because science. <laughs> Ow, my back is still tweaked, even with my own advice. Superhero movies where they get this technique, this kind of save right, are interesting because actors. In a film like the first Superman film where they don't have great CGI, they actually had to have two actors kind of coming together and catching each other. You know, they're on wires and what have you, but they're actual people. And so actual uh, Christopher Reeve couldn't just grab Lois out of the air and stop her with arms of steel. They had to move down because there's real people and real forces involved. And that's why it makes more sense to see it that way because the human bodies involved couldn't do what you see more CGI-tastic films doing. So if you want to be more realistic, that's exactly what it showed, which is good. Thanks again to Borderlands 3 for sponsoring today's episode. The original shooter looter is back and bigger than ever with four all new Vault Hunters and over one billion guns literally. It's time to lock, load, and loot. Pre-order Borderlands 3 now so you can play it when it drops on Xbox One, PS4, and PC on September 13th. Let's make some mayhem. Thank you so much for watching, Colin from Milwaukee. If you want more of me, please follow me and Because Science on these social media handles here where you can suggest ideas for future episodes. <laughs>